Okay, so we have a rational number that satisfies it's the root of that whole number. Okay, so first thing that comes to mind is rational root theorem. Uh, let's see, what else? What do they want? So they want the n numbers. They want to show that the n numbers are integers. Okay, so the last one is clearly the integers, just the polynomial. Uh, so that one's done. And then what are those pattern in the other ones? Uh, we have C and R. So it looks like each one you're essentially just taking the last one, multiplying by R, and then. Oh, actually, there's a better way. So you from C N R to C N R squared plus C N minus one. Okay, so you can break this down into two steps. First step, you add C N minus one, and then you multiply the whole thing by R, which is so let R equals P over Q. So you want to show that. Essentially, okay. So uh, what can we write this in terms of P over Q? We have. Cnp over q, uh, we add cn minus 1, which is an integer, and then we go over here. So that's cn. So we already know this is an integer. Uh, we can show this by induction, yes, I think. Okay. So suppose we have. Suppose we already know this is an integer. Why is this an integer? This is an integer because of the rational root theorem. Yes, this is definitely integer because of rational root theorem. So we already know that this is an integer. Uh, and then we want to show that this times p over q plus c n minus 1 times this times p over q. Yes, so we want to show that this is an integer as well. And the way we do that is we show that q divides this entire thing. Now, how are we supposed to show that? Okay, all I know about this is O is equal to P over Q, so I know by rational rhythm that P divides C0 and Q divides C sub n. So how do I show that a factor of C sub n also divides this plus that? So I want to show that C n P over Q plus C n minus 1 is a multiple of Q. Uh, I can multiply both sides by Q. So it's supposed to show that this is a multiple of Q squared. Now, I already know that this is a multiple of Q. So uh, we can... Hmm. Well, we can take the entire equation mod q, perhaps. Hmm. Okay, so I know the last energy, last one is energy. I can start from the end, maybe. Uh, so the last number is just p of r, which is 0. Uh, second to last number is going to be p of r minus c1r over r. Well, that's just going to be negative c1. Yeah? Yeah. So that's clearly an integer. Okay, so then what if I take... So this is the last one. This is the second to last one. Uh, so third to last one is just going to be whatever this is minus c2r over r. Actually, how about I rewrite this as, yeah, I feel like this is going to be, so we're just dividing by r, subtracting the next one. So uh, from here, we usually get c1, negative c1. We have negative c1 divided by r, subtract c2. Uh, this is an integer we guarantee. So we want to show that r divides that. Well, not really, I divide that, but that P divides C1. This is going to be, this is going to be negative C1 Q over P plus C2. Next one, we're going to have negative C1 Q 
over p plus c2, we're going to multiply by another q over p and then subtract c3. <coughs> so each step we have to show that p divides this whole mess. What's the best way to do that? We might want to do, okay, summarize, what do we know? We know that P of R is zero. Yeah, P is a rational number. The polynomial has integer coefficients, has degree n. We want to show that, so, you know, so all of these have a factor of R in them. Hmm. So if we factor out R, what we get is Cn, we have C and R plus C and minus one. We have okay. Could we do maybe some sort of like Euclid's algorithm thing, or maybe some sort of recursion? Because uh, we might be able to express each one in terms of the two previous ones or the two next ones. So is there a way you can do that? Uh, possibly. So if we take the last one and the second to last one, can we get third to last one. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, if I was going to show that the difference between any two successive ones has to be an integer, or the difference between any two successive multiplied by r, perhaps. <clears throat> so if we take Okay, so first one is C and R. Second one is C and R squared plus C and minus one R. Okay, it's the difference between these integers. So if we want to show that the number is integers, we can start from the end and use induction to work backwards. As long as we can show the difference, this difference is an integer, which has to be true. So we're not trying. To, so I know what we're trying to show has to be true. So this might be a good approach to do. <clears throat> the difference between these two is an integer. What does that mean? Or again, we could take the difference between these two times any constant for either one of these. So, what's a good constant to take? Okay, what happens if we just naively subtract them? We get Cn times r times r minus 1. Cn minus 1, r. So we have a factor of r that comes out. We have Cn r minus 1 plus Cn minus 1. Can we show that this is an integer easily? I don't think so. So, I do feel like the, this kind of inductive approach will be a very fruitful approach. At least look for some sort of either the differences in it or some combination of two adjacent or maybe three adjacent terms will have to be an integer. And given the fact that it's a polynomial, does it help? I think the only thing that matters is that we have the rational root theorem, which so the last one will hold even if the polynomial does not have integer coefficients. We don't need R to be a rational root for that to hold. The fact that the first one is an integer is a direct consequence of the rational root theorem, and so we actually have used all the conditions that they've given us to show that this is so working from this side may be better. Again, recall that what we're doing when we transition from one to the next is we're adding on the next coefficient, which is guaranteed to be an integer. And we're multiplying by r. This is step we need to justify, we need to justify why we can divide this by q, why this is divisible by q. Again, I don't see a particularly straightforward method to do that. And there's always a possibility that this is the entirely wrong approach. Now, suppose...
Okay, why don't we just do some examples? So we have, say I do the polynomial for x, just do a simple cubic, for x squared, uh, actually how about 3x squared minus 5x plus 2, because I know this has dimensional roots. And the roots in this case are going to be 1 and 2 thirds, if I'm not mistaken, yes, and 1 and uh, 12, so it's 4, 9, 4 thirds minus 5, 10 over 3, that's going to be 1, negative 2. Okay, so these are the two roots. Now, this came directly from rational theorem, so I know that 3 times that is an integer. Okay, then we get, what, 2, which needs to divide this, if I'm not mistaken. So remember, we have p over q, we have c sub n. Okay, it does not necessarily have to divide this, just happened in this case. But in that case, this divides, this di division is this way. Okay, this may be, yes? No, I, I think there's no general relationship between the two. All we know is that p divides c0 and that q divides cn. So when we have, this is an integer, then we have multiple of an integer that divides c0. Yeah, then we have no way to decide that way. Okay, so this is no general relationship. Now what happens when we add c1? Why is this divisible by 3? Hmm. Oh, General, can we show something straight? Can we show that c0 divided this? I don't know if that's generally the case. Now, I do know that what we're going to get is some multiple of p, and then we're going to add the second to last coefficient. What does the second to last coefficient have to do with it? Uh, so we're going to rise this to this y3. Well, we can look at it modulo q. I see something that may be fruitful here. So if we know the polynomial is zero at r, we know that any multiple of the, so we could maybe can multiply this by q to the n, say, and then look at the entire polynomial modulo q. That would mean that cn is equivalent to zero mod q, which we already knew. <clears throat> but in that case, what we can do is if cn is 0 mod q, we rewrite it as uh, kn times q, okay, times x to the n plus cn minus 1 times all that jazz. And then we, okay, so we multiply the whole thing by qn before, yeah? Okay, so that's great. And we know that this is... Okay, uh, replace these with odds, yeah. Okay, so this is an integer. Okay, this is an integer. Now, because of this Q here, we can actually factor out a Q and be perfectly fine. This is still an integer. Actually, this is an integer. which means that the okay hold on I think I have something of an idea here but it may or may not okay I need to clarify exactly what I'm doing so what do I want to show I want to show that basically C and R no C N R plus C N minus 1 so uh I want to show that this is divisible by q. Yes, okay. Now, how do I show that? Well, I show that this is 0 mod q. Now, what's the best way to show that's 0 mod q? Well, if I multiply everything else, okay, and if I multiply everything else by q, so can I, can I somehow get this out? and then have everything else be some multiple of q. So if I, I know p of r is zero, which is definitely zero mod q. Okay, now, 
Can I multiply this side by some sort of factor that will give me this? Possibly yes, possibly. Okay, now P and Q are relatively prime, so actually I only need to check. So what if I multiply this by Q to the N? Then I'll end up with a C to the N here. Times P to the N, yeah, uh, plus C N minus 1 times P to the N minus 1 times Q. But okay, this is uh, what, so it's going to be something binomially where the exponents add up to N. Okay, so I know that this side is all divisible by Q. Therefore, I know that this is divisible by Q. Why? Because P N minus 1 is relatively prime to Q. Actually, no, this P is relatively prime to Q. This part, okay, I just expanded out this side. This is going to be 0 mod Q. Every term on this side has a Q in it, which is 0 mod Q. So the entire sum is 0 mod Q. This has to be 0 mod Q, which is by subtraction. And therefore, this is relatively prime to Q. Therefore, C of N is divisible by Q. Okay. Now, can I extend this? Okay, so I could do it. So I know that this is now divisible by Q. I can write C sub n as kq, or k sub nq, there we go. And then instead, I just multiply it by n minus 1, and then repeat the entire process. So here's going to be p minus 1, and uh, because we have an r to the n, this is going to have a 1 over q, but that just exactly cancels this. So then I just have k to the n, p of n minus 1, plus c sub n minus 1, p to the n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, all of these are going to have q. This is still going to be 0 mod q, because it... From, I started with this is equal to 0, so this is going to be 0 mod q, all of these have, so that means that this is divisible by q, which means that factoring out the p to the n minus, is it going to be n minus 1? No, this is going to be p to the n, this could be p to the n, okay, that's fine. Uh, so, this is going to be divisible by q. Uh, if we factor out a p to the n minus 1, uh, relatively prime, so that means that k of kn times p plus c to the n minus 1 is divisible by q. <clears throat> and remember what did we define as kn? kn was cn over q. Yes, k and q is equal to c, therefore k minus. Okay, so this is actually the same thing as cnr, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Can we repeat this process? If we can, then we're done. So we essentially suppose we know that this, okay, then we uh, multiply instead by q to the n minus 2. Uh, we have p to r, we expand out this product, we know this is 0 mod q. Uh, a bunch of terms are going to have a q in them on the right, what terms are not going to have a q? Well, we're going to have a c n, okay, we already know that this is a multiple of q. Uh, so, we're going to have a c n r to the n plus c n minus 1, r to the n minus 1 plus c n minus 2, r to the n minus 2. We're going to multiply all these by q to the n minus 2, everything over here is going to be divisible by q, that doesn't matter, this is equivalent to 0 mod q. Uh, when we multiply by q to the n minus 2. Yeah, okay, so then we have this. This is going to give you just a simple p to the n. Actually, we can just factor out the n minus the p to the n minus 2 right now. Okay, so then we have this q n minus 2. Uh, we're going to have this sitting there. We're going to have a p and a q. Here we're going to have a p squared and a q squared. And that's exactly what we're going to show with 0 mod q. We're done, I think. Okay, now can I formalize this argument? Uh, we know that p of r is equivalent to 0 mod q because it is equal to 0. We multiply by, so we do this by in strong, strong induction, or just induction will suffice, it doesn't really matter yet. So we take, say we take q to the k, then when we write this out, uh, we're going to have c n r to the n plus dot 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 plus c 0. and Right, r uh, equals p to the p over q with q, p and q relatively prime. Uh, all the terms with exponents, so basically c k r to the k and beyond, when we multiply by q to the k, these are just going to be integers. So if we have c k minus 1, r to the k minus 1, this is going to have, this is going to be a p to the k minus 1, uh, q to, so this is going to have q left over, and we can just move that to the other side of the 0 mod q. Okay. And then when we multiply all of these by q to the k, this is going to be a p to the k, and we're going to, it's going to exactly cancel all the q's. Uh, we can factor out the p to the k preemptively. Uh, so this is just going to be 1, and then all of these are just going to be, so what have we done? We have 
essentially to be able to get into this form, we've multiplied by q to the k divided by p. So we divided out r to the k. So we have n to the n minus r. So this term here is just c to the r n minus k plus dot 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 plus c k. Yes, uh, we've eliminated these two. This is zero mod q. This is relatively prime. Therefore, this is zero mod q. No induction necessary. And is this what they wanted? Yes, I believe this is what they want. So if this is zero mod q, I can divide this by q, which means if I multiply this by another r, it's still going to be an integer. And these are exactly the n numbers they wanted. Okay, we're done.